Well, hello, beautiful souls. I have to say, for those of you that miss my lives, this new phone does not like the signal in the good places there are to sit and do videos, so I'm doing them pre-recorded more often. It's not a problem, really. It's just, I don't know, it's interesting. We'll say that because uh, usually there are not this many signal issues, right? But that does tell me that there are likely many messages that are trying to come through to you and messages that you have sent out into the universe that will come through, that will get through. You will get a good transmission. <laughs> now, I'm naming this video DM Energy Check-In, All the King's Horses and All the King's Men, because, like, you're just going throughout my day and I got like a bunch of different like pings just like DMs are in this energy of like they put all their eggs in one basket a lesson that they really likely knew they needed to learn in past connections but didn't and things have there's been towers you know there's been all sorts of stuff happening a lot of the towers they've even instigated themselves without anybody else's help and no one else that they can blame and then spirit has helped with the rest right and i got this message of like a bunch of dms who are losing both their karmics and their dfs in this moment now assuming this is your dm the loss of you is not a permanent thing, though spirit needs them to feel this, you know, and you are likely, I get the sense that you are in kind of a queen of swords, queen of pentacles, blended energy, like you're focusing on you, you're focusing on your coin, and when they've tried to come in and either breadcrumb you or charm you or do something to, that makes them feel better in their karmic situation or that would have previously given them some of your good energy to take back into their situation you put the sword in the stone <laughs> and you said mm -mm, no and on the day that comes that your heart is clean again you will be able to pull out the sword my friend <laughs> you know um you did something whatever it was you did what you needed to do to make sure that that sword was in the stone and very clear right and so these DMs, you know, they're, I don't know whether they're in Dark Night of the Soul or they just came out and they're going back in or just coming out. There's kind of a mixture of energies in it. So I sense that, you know, there's many timelines for many DMs on kind of different steps, you know, different levels of the steps of things, especially because we do have up cycles too. So, you know. Um, I'm getting the sense, actually, that a fair number of these DMs are starting to actually recognize up cycles, like, like not quite repeating energies, but, and not quite deja vus, but similar experiences that they've been in in the past. That's a, that part of consciousness that's like, oh, I've had this lesson before. What did I learn from it last time? And with what I thought I learned from it last time, did what I apply and how I applied it and how I thought about it, did that help me get what I wanted? Also, a lot of my um, favorite astrology apps are, I, I, I kind of giggled because they said we're in this energy, especially with what Uranus and Jupiter are doing of needs versus wants, which is often a big lesson for a lot of people in multiple different ways, right? And in any case, I, I'd laughed because like, I you know, I finally said, all right, all right, I'll do a video. What do you want me to do a video about? And I kept getting this like, DM loses both karmic and DF. Like they both walk away. They both say, no, I'm not, no, I'm not doing this, this nonsense. No. Um, and I thought, you know, one, it sounds cliche and two, like really <laughs> like, I mean, there's so many things I could say about that, but I said, you know what? I'm going to pull some cards from my magic hat. See, I still have my magic hat. I brought it with me both on the road trip and through homelessness. <laughs> In any case, I said, you know what? I'm going to do what I used to do. And I'm going to pull some cards from random different decks and see what I get. And first I pulled from the Divine Circus Oracle. Just blind pull, right? And I got the juggler, <laughs> right? I don't know if I have, if I still have the book in here for the Divine Circus. 
I don't think I do. I do know that the juggler has, you know, it, it, its meaning, I've read through the book, but it's a pretty obvious meaning, right? And I love that it's also, you know, it's depicted as a masculine. And he's got, his hat has, has three, mm, I don't know what you would call those officially on that style of a hat. Um, but there's three limbs on it. It's almost, almost octopus-like, right? And almost like um, Medusa, right? Snakes in the hair kind of thing. And he's holding three balls, right? Juggling his balls. And he looks, he looks thoughtful and sad. And also, like, really disappointed. I don't know. You tell me. I kind of like these cards because, you you know, depending on the energies that you're picking up or the things that are going on, you know, it's like ink blots. You see what you see. And sometimes each person sees things differently. And it feels like... Wow, what an image. You know, the image I just got was the movie The Dark Crystal, where... Um, Oh, I can't remember his name, but it's when the Skexes were, uh, was it Chamberlain? I can't remember. It was the, the little whiny one who, like, he tried to do a coup, and he tried to beat a guy that was bigger than and stronger than him, but he got beat both in a battle of wits and a battle of strength. And then what did they do afterwards? Like, the whole group, like, stripped him of his fancy clothing until all that was left was his, like, skeletal, weird bird human body, <laughs> you know, and they exiled him. And in any case, I feel like maybe that's how some of these DMs are feeling that like, it feels like something that, that you said or something that you did. It wasn't even a big thing, like, or maybe you said a big thing, but not in a big way, but you said it in a place and a time where it got, I'm going to say to the karmics, to, to the pirates. And like, you know, it's funny too, is he does kind of look like he belongs somewhere between a pirate ship and a circus tent. Um, but you did or said something. And now, you know, it's like the Skeksis and their, their battles and their, they turn on each other and they do all the things like that. Right. Um, no, it's interesting as I pulled another card from another deck from my writer's weight deck and don't laugh. Right. Six of cups reversed. Right. What is that? Like in upright, this is nostalgia. This is uh, childhood. This is imagination, you know, gnomes, um, romantic gifts and gestures and things like that. In reverse, it can often rep represent breakups. Um, kind of a, I don't want to say shattering, but it's like things that have to do with things that we believed in our childhood. Not shattering, but like the reality of them coming true. And I'm getting the sense for these DMs, a lot of it has to do with children and the way that they were treated growing up and the way that they treat their own children and the way that other people were treated and kind of that, like, you know, if, if this is the sweetness, hang on, hang on, the juggler keeps jumping around, right? <laughs> See, he's jumping around. Um, it feels kind of like that, like, it, it's like the burst of the bubble of realizing that they have been... <clears throat> treating people in the ways that they got treated that hurt them. And that most definitely includes seeing how they've treated you and treated children. I think they, I think they, most of them on this wavelength have children and they're recognizing that. Um, Six of cups reverse can also indicate like codependent dynamics, uh, toxic parenting, things of that nature. Um, and then I pulled from another deck, divine Oracle deck. And I got card number 27, walking away, right? And it's interesting because just like the juggler is a masculine energy, walking away is a feminine energy, right? And I mean, like, look at this, right? Look at this. Right? <laughs> um, and so, like, you know, those were already confirmations. Uh, same with that six of cups reversed, right? That, that walking away, leaving it behind. And... Then I thought, you know what, I'm going to pull one more from my Oracle of Ascendance deck. And it was Pisces. And this one in particular, I mean, Pisces is Pisces. It's, a, you know, it's a sign. You probably know some people who are amazing Piscean people. It's fishes, it's the moon, things like that. But what, it, what sprung into my mind was at this time last year. So we're, we're coming up on the Pisces full moon 
right? Virgo season, Pisces is a polar opposite. So the full moon is always the polar opposite. And so this full moon is the Pisces full moon. And they say that the Virgo full moon and the Pisces full moon are two of the most powerful moons in every year. Like there are some like that can be more powerful, the blue moons or blue, uh, super blue moon, super full blue moons, like things like that. But those are more sporadic, right? The Virgo full moon and the Pisces full moon are consistently the most powerful of the year. Then they are always there. They always exist. Um, and, you know, you, they're dependable. Which, you know, I was just thinking is, is generally true of most Virgos and Pisceans, especially in their evolved energies, right? Um, but what I was thinking about is it was this time last year, just before the Pisces full moon, when I had said that I wanted to release unhealthy repressed emotions because I recognized that some emotions are healthy to repress. <laughs> I didn't put an arbitration on which ones per se. I let spirit decide on that. I'm glad I did because so far the things that I released were all healthy and they helped me heal a lot. I'm not sure what I'm going to do for this Pisces full moon. It's definitely a good one in terms of working on like the 5d stuff and also emotional stuff spiritual stuff things like that whereas you know the virgo full moon is good to work on like earthly stuff careers farming 3d things stuff like that in any case i also recognize that in especially the past like few years the past like three years that whenever there's been a pisces full moon or even a pisces moon really like it really likes it like cancer moons are very powerful too though the pisces moon man but you know i've noticed that big things have happened and i also like my guides have been reminding me of some times that i was doing videos back then um and recognizing dms around me including my own that were having very big moments and that this is like what they're saying is this is likely to be an up cycle of that so like this energy that I'm picking up on that I'm giving to you now could be something that is coming uh, in, you know, with the Pisces full moon. And I definitely recommend you don't spend too much time focusing on what's happening for DMs. Not only because it's not that healthy. Also because you have to recognize that you are just as much a contributor of the reality of the situation between you and your twin flame and you and you and you and the rest of your life as they are. And the things that you hold your focus on have an effect. They have a big effect, right? And if you 